Hello everyone, in this video I'm going to show you how to make these adorable little bunny buns. These little bunnies are made with a traditional Easter bread that is a slightly sweet bread that's made with eggs and it's baked with an actual real egg in the center of it and the egg has been tinted different Easter colors. They are really cute and they're actually pretty easy to do. So here we go. This recipe makes enough for about six bunnies. So you will need six eggs. The eggs are raw, they have not been boiled. And I bought one of those Easter egg tinting kits at the grocery store and I tinted the eggs different colors. Once the eggs are tinted, you're gonna dry them off completely and remove any excess dye. And now on to the bread recipe. You will need two thirds of a cup of milk, then add two tablespoons of butter, and then put this in the microwave and heat it until the milk is warm to the touch and the butter has started to melt. In a large bowl, you're going to place seven grams of yeast. That's one quarter ounce or two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I'm using it's something called quick rise instant yeast. And what's great about this yeast is you don't have to proof it first. You don't have to mix it with liquid. You just throw it right in with the flour. If you're using a different kind of yeast, then you should follow those directions. Add to that one quarter cup of sugar and start off with one cup of all purpose flour. You will need approximately two and a half cups of flour in total, but you're gonna start off with one cup. Stir that together and then you're gonna add the liquid, which is the milk and the butter. Stir it around until it's nice and smooth. And then add in two large eggs and continue to blend that. Now you're gonna blend in the rest of that two and a half cups of flour that you started off with and add in about a half a cup at a time stirring after each addition. When you add the last of the flour, you'll notice that the dough will start to chase your spoon around the bowl, and that's how you know it's time to put it out onto the counter and to knead it. I put about a handful of flour on the countertop, and then I'm gonna turn out that bread dough on top of the flour. The dough at this point is gonna be quite sticky, so add a little bit of flour on the top as well, and then start to knead it. Now, as you're kneading the dough, you may have to continue to add small amounts of flour to keep it from sticking to your hands, and to the countertop, but the more you knead it and the more you add little bits of flour, it'll get smooth and elastic and it'll become less sticky to the point where it won't be sticky anymore at all. You're gonna have to knead this for about eight minutes and that does seem like a long time, but if you want really good bread, the secret is in the kneading. The way I knead bread is the turn, fold, squish method. So you turn, fold it, squish it. Turn it, fold it, squish it. Turn it, fold it, squish it. You get the idea. And the longer you go, the more smooth and elastic your dough will get. After about eight minutes, when you touch the dough ball, it'll spring back like it's elastic and it won't be sticky anymore. And then I spread a little bit of vegetable oil in the bottom of the bowl. Add the dough ball and then you're just going to turn the dough ball a little bit to coat it with oil. Then cover it with a damp cloth and put it somewhere warm to rise until it's doubled. And that can take a couple of hours, depending how warm your kitchen is. I put mine in my oven and I just turn the oven light on and I use that as a source of heat. So mine took about an hour and a half. It's doubled in size. Then take it out of the bowl, put it down on the countertop, and then you're gonna punch it down. Now punching it down will take care of any big air bubbles that might be trapped inside there. And you'll notice that the texture of the dough has changed completely. It's a lot smoother and a lot more elastic. So stretch it out into a long cylinder shape that is approximately 14 inches long. And then you're going to cut this 14 inch piece into six equal pieces. And then you're going to take each of those small pieces, roll it out into a long rope shape that's about 10 inches long. Then cut three inches off one end and then cut off another little piece that's only about a half inch long. The little tiny piece will be the bunny tail. The second largest piece will be the bunny head and ears. And the larger piece is going to be the bunny body. And then take that bunny body piece, that longer piece, and stretch it out so that it's at least eight inches long. And then you're gonna take that eight inch piece and you're going to form it into a circle shape. Now, in order to glue the two ends together, you're just gonna brush on a little bit of beaten egg and then just join the two ends together and press them together and pinch them together to make sure it's well attached. This will be the body of the bunny. Then you're gonna take that second largest piece and you're gonna form it into a head with a little 
bunny ear sticking out of it. Brush it with a little bit of the beaten egg and then stick it to the body piece. And just make sure that they are attached. Then for that tiny little piece, roll it into a ball shape and that's gonna be the bunny tail, so attach it to the body. If it's not sticking properly, you can add a little bit of that beaten egg to make it stick. Okay, so a quick recap. Take one of those six large pieces, roll it out into a log shape that's about 10 inches long. Then you're gonna cut off three inches of that that's going to be used for the head and ears and a little half inch piece for the tail. Take that remaining piece, make sure it's eight inches long, stretch it out, attach it together to make a circle shape, and then attach the head and the tail. And then cover up all your little bunny pieces with a damp cloth, and you're gonna let it rise for about another hour until they've almost doubled in size. And there they are after about an hour, they've almost doubled in size. And if you notice, I made four bunnies, and with the other two pieces, I braided them together to make like a ring shape. I wanted to try something a little bit different. So you can gently reform the ears a little bit if they're not quite to your liking, but be careful not to squish it down too much. I took the end of a spoon just to poke in little eye shapes in each bunny. And then I brushed on some of that beaten egg onto each bunny. And what the egg wash does is it gives the bread a really nice golden color and makes it shiny. And then you're going to take one of those raw tinted eggs and just gently place it in the center of each of the bunny bodies. I also added an egg to that wreath shape that I made. And then you're gonna bake these at 350 degrees for about 20 minutes until the bread is a nice golden brown. So after your bunny bread has been baked, allow it to cool and then you're ready to decorate it. To do this, you can put a little bit of honey into that eye shape that you made in the head prior to baking, and then you can press in a black jelly bean into the bread, and you have yourself a little bunny eye. This part's optional, of course, but you can brush on additional honey onto the tail piece and sprinkle on a little bit of sweetened coconut for the bunny fur. And those are the completed bunnies. The bread is delicious, it's very light, it's just slightly sweet, and it's really, really good. You can also decorate these with a little bit of ribbon around each of the little bunny necks. I had a couple bunnies that turned out really good and a couple that weren't so good. And I had one egg that cracked a little bit, but the other ones actually stayed quite nice. And there is the ring that I made. It almost looks like a little like a bird's nest. I had seen photos of this Easter bread with the tinted eggs in it. And I always wondered how the eggs cooked in the oven and how exactly you go about eating this. So what I did was took a spoon and I just kind of worked the egg out. And when I peeled the egg and cut it in half, I realized it was perfectly cooked. So what I'm going to suggest is that you can slice that bunny bun right in half toast it, put some butter on there, and you've got yourself toast and eggs. Or you could fill that center cavity with some jam or Nutella, and you've got a great little Easter breakfast. Give it a try. Have you seen my Easter cookie pizza video? If you haven't, you can click right on your screen or click on the link in the description box. And while you're here, please give me a thumbs up. They make me happy. Goodbye.